So let's talk animal language. My name is Patty Ann, and today we are going to talk about how you can talk to your pets. You can send messages and receive their messages. Enjoy the presentation, and here we go. Our topic focus today is ways animals communicate, how to connect and initiate a conversation with an animal, how to send and receive messages, how to ask the right questions to get accurate and exact answers back. And we will talk a lot about heart-centered conversations and more. By the way, all the graphics that you see in this video, I have designed and created and I hope you'll find them entertaining and humorous. So our number one rule of thumb is animal communication. Make it fun, easy, fun and fun, 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 and more fun and positive. Learning animal language is actually a lot easier than it seems like. You don't have to use anything but your own body and your intuition and listening skills and just paying attention. I'll show you how in this video. Just remember to keep your vibration level high, keep yourself positive, keep yourself focused, relaxed, just like you would in a conversation with one of your best friends, one of your best human friends. Laugh with your animal friends, be positive, practice. Know that your animal knows what you're doing. You cannot get it wrong. It's like learning a new language and a new language muscle. So every attempt and approach is absolutely correct. And the more you practice, the better you get. We're gonna talk a lot about talking with heart energy. That is where the path of animals lays has always been. I consider animals the original fifth dimensional beings. We hear a lot about ascending from the third to the fifth dimension lately. And we are ascending humans to a higher vibration level. So while animals are already living in the fifth dimension, we are meeting them there now. We're going to talk about connecting to have a good conversation and hearing each other, which includes listening skills. All communication between every living being has the following ingredients. We all have behaviors that communicate. These behaviors include both verbals and nonverbals. Nonverbals behaviors make up 90% of communication. However, Thoughts form all communication behavior. So you have to be very intentional about your thoughts. Intentional communication always starts and it maintains a good reciprocal relationship, no matter if you are talking to humans or animals or any species. Intentional communication is important. Why do animals wanna communicate with us? Well. They like to be social. Animals are very social and they like to say hi. They really like to be acknowledged. And you're gonna hear me talk about being acknowledged quite a bit through this slideshow. They will ask for help just like a human would ask for help. They like to tell their story and they normally tell it in pictures. Now, there is a difference between animal stories being told and human stories. The animals will tell their stories in pictures that you will see in your third eye. Animals don't hold on to their stories necessarily like humans do. Humans culture is built on storytelling, the past, the present, and the future. Well, animals don't necessarily live in their past stories or their future stories. They live in the now but they can be very good picture tellers and they can show you their past and they can show you their future. 
It just depends on that particular being you're talking to. So storytelling, mm, a little different for all species. Okay, animals also want to talk to us because they would like to show us something, communicate something to us, help their owners understand or help humanity understand. They like to ask for simple things such as food and water. And mostly they like to share their gratitude and say thank you. So animals are not that much different than us human beings. How they talk. Okay, animals will talk to their own species and to us humans in three basic ways. Not that difficult to understand. They show their behaviors include, including their voice much like we do. We talk, we share, we show our behaviors. Animals will send pictures and pictures are visuals that you will get in your third eye area or in your thoughts. And animals will share their emotions, which is heartfelt. And you will need to use empathy for these emotions to be felt and heard and communicated from you as well. These are three basic ways and this is where we're going to start today. So how do we talk to our human friends? It's rather the same way, isn't it? We show our behaviors. In fact, we display them all the time. Now remember behaviors are both verbal and nonverbal and nonverbal is pretty much 90% of communicating our walk. Are we walking our talk? So behaviors speak loud and they are right out front, up front in your face. Okay, we also send visual pictures to people. Now we'll tell a story and we'll give a person a visual of what that story is, depending on how you describe it. And our Human friends will laugh at our stories or they'll get sad at our stories. It's the same that animals can help teach us about their stories. They send visual pictures. We share our emotions because we are emotional feeling beings. And this is at the bottom and the essence of our beingness is our feelings and our emotions. It's our guide or counter for who we are and where we are at any one time. And of course we use our voice and our voice, the tone of it, the vibration of it can convey a lot, even more so than the words we use. So how do animals talk with behavior? Well, let's just take this example. Every body position is a behavior. A dog laying down can have a lot of different meanings and a lot depends on a dog's attitude and disposition and so how would you interpret this dog's behavior? Well, he's laying down, he's anticipating, he's happy and he's attentively looking at us. I will say this is a dog that used to greet me on a job every day. And this is exactly his demeanor when he greet me every day. He was waiting for me, anticipating me. He was focused on me and always looking me over and looking me in the eye. So this would be a real typical greeting behavior. Behavior speaks loud, pay attention to it. Interpreting animal behavior can be tricky sometimes because what if you open a door to find a dog? What's your first thoughts going to be? In this particular example, you open this door. Is that dog your dog? Is it a neighbor's dog? Is it a lost dog? Our thoughts go through a lot of processes to discern what the truth here is. Is this dog hungry? Is this dog thirsty? Does the dog want in or does the dog want you to come out? You can see we're interpreting animal behavior just like human behavior. We're always trying to guess what it means and we need more information. But animal behavior is a huge communication. Okay, the cartoon might be a little exaggerated, but you get the hint here. You can ask an animal what they ate 
and they will show you in pictures or they might tell you. A lot of times animals will send you images and the images will come through thoughts and end up in your third eye of your forehead area. This is where a lot of pictures and images display, kind of like a movie screen. Sometimes animals will even initiate conversations by sending you a picture and you don't know where this picture came from. It just came from wherever and you're getting it. Don't be surprised if you meet an animal and a picture comes first and you don't know where it came from. Animals talk with great emotions, great heart emotions. And the horses, well, I communicate with horses on a very deep level because I resonate with them, as I do most animals. But with horses, when you start resonating with them, they have a very deep emotional center. Their heart is large and they are very empathic toward us humans. That's why they make such wonderful therapy companions. Anyway, when you start talking through your heart, sending and receiving through your emotional center of your heart, it is a very powerful instrument for communicating. Animals will share their emotions gladly as long as they trust you, which means a person also has to ask animals to talk and to, animals need trust to talk, they also need you to have honorable intentions. It's just like a person, a best friend of yours, they become a best friend because they trust you. Your behaviors are consistent. So it's not that different when you are asking an animal to share their heart and their emotions with you. You need to have honesty and integrity and honorable intentions. Keep your energy neutral or even uplifted. You must have compassion and empathy, which means you can understand that perspective of that species or that friend. And an attitude of gratitude, always thanking this living being for sharing is such an, a wonderful acknowledgement. Make sure an animal knows they can trust you and these are the ingredients to start that path. Practice smiling at animals. The one thing that I will say a lot during this video is animals love to be appreciated. I call it smiling at them because a smile is a universal language for saying hello. And to all species, it opens doors to being friendly and receptive whether you're a human, an animal, it's just a universal language that is wonderful. Animals love being smiled at because it acknowledges them as who they are in that moment. It shows that you care and it displays a kindness. Actually, all humans love to be appreciated too. Everybody responds well to appreciation because it's a very simple gesture that tells another living being they are cherished for just who they are in this moment. It's a compliment. One thing to remember is to practice and play with communicating because you're learning another person's or another being's language. You need to be patient with yourself. Don't get frustrated, get happy. Laugh at yourself. Your mate will laugh at you. Your animals will laugh at you. They love laughter. The higher your vibration, the more you will accomplish. Don't try too hard, let it flow. This cartoon shows you a typical example of asking an animal how they are. And the animal says, fine, because the animal will hear you better than they and better than you will hear them. And the reason for that is, is we have a lot of clutter in our mind going all the time or multitasking. We have a lot up there and we need to quiet our mind down and relax ourselves so that we can open up our reception. Animals live basically in the now and in intention of easy and flowing and yielding. 
something us humans aspire to. So animals are always listening. They hear you, but you also have to meet that vibration level. So it's a lot about hot head and thought and heart coherence and meeting the two together. So sometimes you might ask an animal, are you okay or are you fine? And all of a sudden, after you've asked him a couple times, you'll hear it really loud and clear. And you'll go, wow, that was kind of easier than I thought. The comfort of touch is very powerful. I mean, who doesn't like to be hugged or your back rubbed or have an embrace? A deep mental connection is equivalent to a physical touch and comfort. Both approaches acknowledge and touch the psyche of another living being. I'm not going to discuss touch so much in this slideshow because we are concentrating on picture talk, empathy and heart coherence and emotions and behaviors. So touch needs to definitely be acknowledged and it's important. But I would also encourage you when you're getting to know an animal, do not approach the animal and want to touch right away. They need to get your, they need to feel that they can trust you and that, that trust, they will then approach you. Touch comes in time. Okay, here's a big one. Our intuition is our body talk and it equals our awareness towards helping this communication. Here's all or some of the major intuitive things that come through our body. Our thoughts and ideas are always floating around and we grab them and bring them into our, into our head. And then we discern and evaluate them. Sometimes you'll just get a knowing, absolute knowing. Could be also referred to as clairsentient, you just know, or claircognition. We also can see images through our third eye, or we'll just get a visualization that comes to us. A lot of times we hear words or sentences. It could be that you're clairaudient. Sometimes these words come from other sentient living beings like animals. Sometimes we see the aura of a person or a living being, or we feel it, or we like to set a boundary around ourselves to make sure that we have our own sacred space protected. Listen to your body sensations. They are huge. They are a educator. Body sensations can be felt anywhere from your ears to your forehead to your spine to your back to your elbow. And most of all, heartfelt emotions are huge in animal communication. Let's feel your way to the animal channel as I call it. It's like tuning a radio dial to the right channel because as you know, when you have friends, different friends of yours, oftentimes are at different places in different vibrations and different energies. And sometimes you have to tune into them and sometimes they have to tune into you. It's very easy to resonate with people on our own level and our own vibration. It's a little bit more challenging and a little bit more learning and stretching of our own energy to go seek out the energy of another living being and understand where they're at. So play with this. How do you tune in? Is it a color frequency? Is it a channel on a radio? Is it here, 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 over here? Or is it just a feeling you develop? What do you think? Play with this. I would say that once you tap in, grab that feeling, you'll know what it feels like. Navigate back to that feeling of what it feels like and each time it will get easier and easier. It's like a muscle, channel muscle that you would exercise. Here's some easy steps for you to 
use to start the process of animal communication. And a few key tips are, again, raise your vibration, put a smile on your face, put on a happy heart, open your heart, breathe slow and deep, concentrate on your breath, which helps clear your head for better intention, and it'll help your body relax. Your state of being will put others at ease. It makes you approachable, it makes you calm, and it will command attention by another being when you are focused, calm, and listening and attentive to them. You do these steps naturally whenever you're having fun or you're focused on a passion. You can do the same when you're communicating with animals. Breathing with an open heart. To remind yourself, put your hands over your heart. Close your eyes. Feel your heart energy. Feel your heart beat. Focus on your breath. Inhale and exhale very slowly. And just feel your body relax. If you know meditation or know how to be awake to your emotional well-being, this is a path to this calm center because balancing your energy is key. Always be aware of your emotions. Always understand how to use empathy. Empathy is putting yourself in another being's place to feel and understand where they're at and how they are processing everything. And again, communicate through your heart. Even though thoughts come through your mind when you're dealing with animals and friends and this is where it's going now. It's heart-centered communication. Okay, we're gonna initiate some contact when you speak with an animal. Again, open your heart, focus on the animal, and she or he will begin to tune in to you. Focus is huge, and this is a pen intentional. You're intending to contact. Now, it's easy to contact with a pet you know, or your own animal. I would challenge you to try this with an animal that is out in a pasture or in a herd. You can focus on one animal in a herd, or you can focus on all of the animals in the herd. But if you really want to know if it works, you play with it. Play with a group of animals, play with one animal. See if you can single one animal out of the herd. Even though the whole herd will hear you, maybe you'll get one to respond if you focus on that one. Again, it's a play thing. Experiment, practice. And you can start with a simple smile, universal smile, a simple hello, such as, hello, I see you. Hello, beautiful. Can we talk? I'd like to get to know you. Whatever your comfort level is, whatever your style is, just use it intentionally. And you can use your voice because that carries vibration and that carries your, your energy and vitality. When you send out a message of intention, be patient and wait. Don't get impatient. Don't go something like, hello, I see you. Hello, are you there? Are you there? Wait, say it once, pause. Pause might be five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Each animal is different. And if an animal has never talked to a human in this way, they hear you, but they might take time to respond. Observe body language of your counterparts that you're talking to, whether it's a human or an animal. Repeat your messages slowly, intentionally. Change your vibration level. Make sure it's happy and uplifting. Keep smiling with your heart. Again, don't touch or approach an animal because that also is something that they will do to you. If they hear you, they may approach you and come right to you. So you'll know they've heard you. Okay, how do you know your hello is heard? Again, watch the animal's body language. Look at him or her in the eyes. Are they looking at you with attentiveness or interest? You can also observe their ears. Are their ears perked to you? Are their ears adjusting? Sometimes, you know, animals' ears adjust 
kind of fun to watch the ears and or their tail might be wagging or the animal approaches you, turns your direction. Sometimes it's very, very subtle. A cow or a horse may simply just lick their lips in acknowledgement and go back to grazing. Watch for the small cues that the animal was not doing before you said that hello. There are no coincidences. Animals love to be appreciated. Again, this is really, really important. They love to be appreciated because it tells them they're acknowledged, they're recognized, and they're worthy of value. It works because animals are worthy living beings who have value on our planet. This is Mr. Orbit. He knows he has lots of value in my life. And he is helping me today orchestrate this. And you can see Lunar in the background. Right there. They're my buddies. They tell me a lot about a lot. Right now they're telling me they want to be a part of this too. So here you go, Mr. Orbit. You can talk. So the emotion of appreciation is an awesome vibration to send. Why? Because it's inclusive of all the higher vibrations. It includes gratitude, it includes love, it includes happiness. What appreciation is, is in the moment and in the now, and it doesn't have any other attachments to it. There's nothing conditional. It's just appreciating another being for who they are and what they're doing right now. That's what it's all about. When you ask questions, oops, you're going to go that way. When you ask questions, make sure they are very, very simple. And here's a few tips. Ask very short questions. Ask yes or no questions. Ask for an emotion or a picture or a behavior. Don't make it too complicated. Ask for one thing at a time and then wait and observe. This is not like a person that may be very quick to respond and you can tell it in their behaviors right away. Now I will say if you resonate with a certain animal, such as a cat, a dog, a horse, a snake, a porcupine, a skunk, whatever animal you resonate with, I would start with them because you know the cues already of what it looks like when they're attending you and their behaviors. So start with something you know and graduate on from that. Trust, trust, trust your intuition. It plays a major role. I can't say that enough. And uh, intuition comes into your physical body through several paths. Again, this is just a reminder. Images you visualize, silent words you hear, thoughts you just know, emotions you may experience, and body sensations. <laughs> and Mr. Orbit's having a lot of fun right now. He's just... He's just feeling everything I'm telling you all. And he's saying, yeah, mama, yeah, yeah, go. <laughs> so it's about tuning in and tapping in and relaxing your body, quieting your mind, taking slow, deep breaths, focus upward, above and beyond. Seek an animal's energy essence by tuning into their channel, adjusting yourself, have fun with this, Feel your way to his or her aura energy field. Enjoy the process. Be positive. Laugh. It's all about fun. A new muscle, a new language you're learning. It takes time. Okay. This is very important. I actually have a blog on my website, pattyann.net, that has this information too. Animals feel lost as much as much as humans do. They become depressed, sad, grieved, just as much as humans. And if you tune into this grief, it can really overwhelm you so much with their heartbreak. And it can overwhelm you. Simply put, it's difficult when you actually realize how deeply animals feel in their emotions. For instance, if a goat loses its pasture mate or a sheep loses its pasture mate, it might bleat or cry for days. 
the pasture mate might have died, the pasture mate might have been sold, the pasture mate might have been weaned, might have been a mother and baby. Routinely confined animals show nothing but often are very numb from depression. They're just so checked out. A horse in a stall that's confined for days on end, a bird in a cage, a dog locked up in a kennel, it's hard on them. A companion animal develops anxiety when their owner dies and becomes completely, oftentimes, at loss. So when you see an upset animal, you can actually help them quite a bit. What you can do, again, is send them appreciation. Keep them the upper vibrations. Don't feel sorry for them. That's a lower vibration. Any vibration that doesn't feel heartfelt and happy, don't send it to them. You're keeping them in that spot of what they already know. Tell them you appreciate them and their feelings. Use empathy. Thank them for sharing their emotions with you. Thank them deeply. Send gratitude for their honesty and transparency and beauty. Tell them, tell them that you have value in your life and they are a worthy being and you're glad that you have met them. Sincerely send your positive heart energy. That's the best thing you can do, actually, to humans too. But with humans, we tend to want to commiserate with them. This does not work for animals. Send positive emotions, acknowledgement, and appreciation. In that moment, in that time, you will help elevate that animal deeply. So my one wish for the world, for all of humanity, is that we can all hear the animals near and far. That is my one wish, so we can understand their contribution. Remember, the animals can live without us, but we cannot live without them. What's that tell you? This information from this slideshow came from these playbooks I developed that are available on my website. I have three of them. You've just received the information or some of the information out of um, the How Animals Communicate, Playbook 1, and Playbook 2, How to Send and Receive Messages. The third book has a lot of worksheets and a lot of exercises and a lot of practice sheets in it. In fact, all of these are workbooks and playbooks with templates that you can use when you go out and you practice. You can record your experience and then compare and keep different experiences and learn and grow through your journaling. All of these come in a book bundle for savings. If you wish to uh, purchase it that way, you can purchase through my website, pattyann.net, through Etsy, Patty Ann's Pet Project on Etsy, and on Teachers Pay Teachers, Patty Ann's Pet Project. And these books, all support Patty Ann's Pet Project. So everything on my website, all products support, every purchase goes for Patty Ann's Pet Project and I support animal welfare because every animal deserves comfort just like we do. Thanks for listening. I hope you learned something here and uh, you can visit my website, pattyann.net. Thank you.